All right, our next family, the Fadulidae, the top minnows, very cool fish, very cool looking fish. You can see them all the time. They do well in tanks. Really like these fish. Um, so we call them top minnows. They're also called killifish, if you ever heard of a killifish. Um, and they're, there's a lot of fish in this family. They're popular in the aquarium trade, so you probably run into them. They're about five species in this family in Kentucky. Although they're called top minnows, they're not a minnow, right? They're not Cyprinidae. Uh, they don't have a lateral line. It's one thing you can look for. We talked about the rounded caudal fin. They have a very superior mouth. They're clearly adapted to living up top, to living at the surface of the water. And so their mouth is upturned to help try and pull things off the surface of the water. The couple species that we're going to learn for lab are the black striped top minnow and the black spotted top minnow. And these are the ones we're most likely to find around here. And you can probably imagine how we're going to identify these or tell between the two. The black stripe has got just a stripe. You see how it's kind of got some diamond shapes built into the stri stripe? That's something you can look for. Again, notice how the stripe goes through the eye. I've pointed this out before, how a lot of organisms do that if they have a stripe. It's because they're trying to disguise their eye, and so you've got to stripe the whole length of the body, and it always goes through the eye. You can see the superior mouth. You can see the rounded anal fin. Um, and again, these are minnow size. They're found where you find minnows, but they're not a minnow. How are you going to tell them from a minnow? Minnows have a forked tail. Minnows have a lateral line. And so, um, you know, pretty clearly these are not a minnow. The dorsal fin is set much farther back than the minnow family. And which is what this says. It's like a mud minnow. The dorsal fin is set way back with that rounded tail. But whereas these have a very superior mouth, the mud minnow's mouth is more terminal or inferior. And of course, then this is the black spotted top minnow. And it's got very obvious spots on the upper half above the stripe on the side, you're going to have some very obvious spots. Um, that makes it pretty easy to identify from the black striped top minnow. So another thing that you might notice about these uh, top minnows is they have this very obvious spot on the top of their head. And this is what you'll see a lot of times when you see these fish in the stream. You'll notice them. Of course, they're up at the surface, but they have that very obvious spot on top of this flat head. Well, what is that spot? That spot is actually the pineal gland, which is part of the brain. And so what you're seeing in the top minnow is you're actually seeing the brain. The skull is thin enough there that the brain is exposed. Not really exposed, but you can see the brain. You can see through the thin skull. Well, why is that? The pineal gland is sometimes called the third eye. It's a part of the brain that is photosensitive. It's sensitive to light. Um, but whereas your eyes, you know, uh, you have nerves in your eyes that are sensitive to light and, and they create and form vision um, and, and let you see things in your eye, the pineal gland, you don't really see anything with it. It's just in tune to the photo period. And so whenever there is light that stimulates the gland and when there's not light, it's not stimulated, but it's the length of that stimulation that influences how much hormone gets released. And so this is one way that organisms can um, establish their circadian rhythm. And so this part of their brain that's sensitive to light can tell when the days are getting longer and so it releases certain hormones which might stimulate you to go spawn or whatever. And so that's what you're seeing in the top minnow is that that part of the brain um, is actually kind of exposed. It's covered, it's just the skull is thin there to let that light in and so that they can tell when it's day and when it's night and they can tell if the days are getting longer and that influences their development. A lot of organisms do that, it's just prominently displayed and you can, you know, see it in these top minnows. But it makes sense because they live up top where they're going to be exposed to the light, so it makes sense that this is developed in this species. So that's all it is, which I think is kind of cool. Now this is not a top minnow that we have here in Kentucky, but it's an interesting story, and I, so I'd like to tell you it. Um, it's, it's also a fundulid, but this is the mangrove killifish. And these live in mangrove swamps, like down in Florida. And they're a cool fish 
because they don't need a mate. They have both male and female organs. They can fertilize themselves internally. So they're the only vertebrate that can do this. And so f for one reason, they're in I mean, that's interesting in and of itself, but they're often used in research because you can uh, have, you know, you've got vertebrates that can fertilize themselves. You can control the genetic lineages. You can get some inbreeding. Um, if you've got lab specimens and you're trying to take genetics out of the experiment, this is a good way to do that. And so you create these genetically identical clones, which can be useful for research. So that's pretty interesting, but there's more. Um, so they live in these swamps that tend to dry up. And so to survive when this, the water dries up, these fish will crawl up in the inside of these trees. And they'll find out a place in the tree trunk and they'll just hang out and they'll wait for it to rain, wait for the water to come back up and then they'll just drop back down. And so while they're up there, they, uh, they uh, have some morphological changes that allow them to survive outside of the water. So their skin thickens up, um, their gill covers get covered in this mucus um, so they don't lose water through the gills. They uh, start to excrete uh, ammonia and their nitrogenous waste, they, instead of excreting it through the gills like they normally do, they excrete it through the skin. Um, so they have all these adaptations, you know, they don't do much, they just sit there and survive. But still, it's pretty amazing that you've got this fish that spends quite a bit of time outside of water. And so, yeah, when the water comes, then all these changes reverse and they just drop back down and go about their business. Okay, um, so that's just a little bit about the Fendulidae. Thanks a lot.